I'm Luke from Korg and this is the Multipoly. This is our next generation analog modeling synthesizer inspired by the classic Monopoly from the 1980s. So what we've given you here is a great feeling key bed, these nice wooden end cheeks and an aluminium top. So it feels great to use and it's very robust and solid. And then inside we've got virtual voice card technology, which basically allows us to accurately model the behavior of every individual circuit from filters to VTAs to portamento and put it all together to help recreate that authentic analog sound. Okay, let's dive in and have a listen. So the structure of this synth is based around these four layers. So you have four layers and you can turn them on and off by double tapping the buttons here. And then in each of those layers, you have four oscillators, just like the original Monopoly. So one, two, three, and four. And again, we can just turn them on and off. So let's just listen to oscillator one. So we've got a detuned saw wave there because we're using our classic waveforms. So and then we can go through, look at the different waveforms. So let's have a look at uh, a pulse wave and then of course we can manipulate that using these controls and you can see on the screen there that's pulse width but not only that you've got digital waveforms as well so these are inspired from our mod wave and they're actually wavetables which means we can actually sweep through the different waveforms again just by using this control here so we have wavetables and then we have over 200 of these built in. So let's check out a different one. And again you can see that sweeping through. Plus we have the option to use a wave shaper waveform as well. So that can either be a triangle or a sine. And then we can use different shaper models to add extra harmonics to our sound like this. So the original Monopoly had very powerful sync and cross mod capabilities and we brought that into the Multipoly as well. So first thing, when you hear a sync sound, you think of this kind of sound normally. And what it's doing is it's forcing the oscillators together to be in sync. So you get that kind of sound like that and or a kind of bigger sound like this. So you can get some great sounds going with, with the sync functionality. We've also got cross mod or X mod as it says on the panel there. So basically what that does is it allows you to make more complex harmonic sounds. So things like bells work really well using this technology. So a sound like this for example. If I turn that off, you'll hear the difference. So you're only hearing one oscillator and then you can sum them all together to create that more bell-like sound. The Multipoly has an incredible filter section. You've actually got 17 filters to choose from. We've modeled some of our own classic filters and also some of the manufacturers as well. So let's dive in and have a listen to a few of these. So um, first of all, this is based on the original Monopoly filter. Let's sweep through the filter. or maybe a classic MS-20 filter. So we've modeled the low pass and the high pass version. As well as things like this classic filter from an 80s synth, a polyphonic synthesizer. and this kind of monophonic synth, which are very famous um, for leads and basses. You've also got a second version of the Monopoly filter as well. And this is a kind of softer two pole version of the filter which allows you to do things like notch filtering, bandpass filters, and band rejected as well. And 
because you have two of these filters built into each layer, you've got so many possibilities. So you can use them in different configurations. They could be in serial, they could be in parallel. This is one of the preset patches. It's called a stereo filter pad. So it's using both of them in conjunction. So because we have four layers, A, B, C, and D, we can actually get some quite complex patterns going and different sound layers and all sorts. So check out this preset here. Um, sounds like this. So there's quite a lot going on there. Let's try and deconstruct that. So by double tapping these buttons, I can actually turn on and off different parts. So if we just go with layers B and D, it's given us drum groove and a bass line effectively and if we add in layer C we can actually see the, the volumes of them all here as well layer A another sequence So you can get some really interesting stuff going on. You can also zone those sounds as well and change the keyboard velocity of each layer as well. So for instance here we could have a split keyboard with a nice kind of pad pedal sound and then something a bit more gritty at the top. Another concept we've brought across from the Monopoly from the 80s is what we call layer rotate. Now on the original Monopoly, you could rotate between the four different oscillators as you played a key. But what we're doing here is we can actually rotate between different layers should we wish, which is really cool. So here, for instance, if I play the single note, you'll see it rotating. And at the moment we're only using two layers. But as soon as you start playing more notes, it becomes much more interesting. It's pulling out so many different textures than you would normally get. Plus you can add the arpeggiator to that as well, so it'll arpeggiate it for you. And of course, with the arpeggiator, you could change the resolution. So we could put it onto 16th. You could use that for all four layers as well, should you wish. So you can see that's now cycling through the layers. And you can also change the way it rotates. So that's going forwards and backwards at the moment but I could have it randomized. Backwards or forwards. There are so many ways to manipulate your sounds in a multi-poly. One really cool way is using the mod knobs. So you have four knobs here and they're mapped to parameters on the presets, but you can remap them yourselves. And it tells you on the screen what they're mapped to. So let's check out this preset here. Mod number one. It's adding some hi-hats. The third one here, it's filtering the sound. Fourth one, has some effects. And don't forget your mod wheel as well. That'll often be assigned to something cool.
So you saw me using this XY pad here. This is a chaos pad which we've brought across from the mod wave and also the chaos physics side of it as well, which we'll get into in a minute. But basically what a chaos pad or an XY pad can do is manipulate your sound really easily by touching. So let's hold this pad sound down and then I can feel my way through the sound. I can also put it into hold mode which means I can do that same thing, but it will stop when I release my finger and it will retain that, that sound when I find this sweet spot in the sound that I really like. And then I'm free to return to it at any time and just keep manipulating it. So that's using it like a regular chaos pad or an XY pad if you like. But it starts getting really interesting when you use the Chaos Physics mode. So the Chaos Physics allows you to set a bouncing ball off in motion and it will move around, changing different parameters, and then you can change the way that moves around the screen and the four quadrants as well. So take this as an example. Quite a static sound, but as soon as I start touching the pad, it manipulates it as it did before, but I can actually then set the ball in motion and it will manipulate it itself depending on how the chaos physics is set. So I can go into the parameters of that and start changing things like, for instance, this bump height. So it's at minus 100 at the moment, which means it's concave, but I can make it convex. So that means the ball will find it more difficult to get over that hump. I can also move it as well. So I can move it from left to right, up and down, anywhere in that screen. And I can also use all of these different presets. And as you can see, there's loads of them. And some of them force the ball to be launched from the center automatically so you have that element of control where you know it's going to start but it will still has a little bit of randomization once that ball starts moving around so you've probably noticed throughout the demo there's lots of sequencing going off at times and you're thinking well how is that happening well the fact is we've got a step sequencer built in well actually four of them because you've got one per layer so you've got some possibilities to get some incredibly complex stuff going on. Um, let's take a look how that goes. So it's basically using our technology called Motion Sequencing 2.0. So as I press a note here on uh, this layer, it's playing the step sequence, and I can hone in on any of these lanes to see what's going on. So I'm on the pitch lane here, so you can see it's playing this sequence here. These are the different pitches. I can also press sequence view to see an overview of it as well, which is really useful. So on step three there, for example, of the pitch lane, let's change it to plus 13 semitones. So it's now just spiking slightly over the octave, you can hear. Well, let's go into lane A here, which is completely programmable. In this case, it's just spiking the Cut off a little bit, but you can hear it. If I turn that off, you'll hear it's a sort of flatter sound. Let's add in a few extras. So it's happening more often, that little squelchy filter sweep. As well as using these 16 buttons here for step sequencing and motion sequencing 2.0, we can also use them as setlist buttons as well. So I can just recall my favorite sounds really easily and save into them really easily as well. And you've got four banks of 16, so you've got plenty of sounds there to get you going. It also means we've got smooth sound transitions built in as well. What that does is it allows me to play a sound change sound and then that previous sound doesn't disappear so it makes the whole thing much smoother and much more musical it also allows me to do things like this where i can sustain a sound on one sound change sounds and then play over the top
go back to my previous sounds. As you can see, I've brought in my laptop because I want to show you the editor librarian software for the MultiPoly, which is fantastic. And it's a free download from my website. So as you can see here on the screen, I've got my list of sounds. So let's select this sound here. And then once you've selected it, you can play your sound back and it gives you a, such a nice visual representation of your sound on your different layers. You can see the, the sequence playing back there on the different layers. It also shows you really nicely things like the chaos physics and it really does start to hit home just how complex and deep this synth is when you start to look at this editor software from the five LFOs to the four different envelopes to all the modulation matrix routings um, it really is very cool let's select a different sound and I'm going to show you the effects screen here. So the multi-poly has an incredible effects built in. You've probably been hearing it all throughout. But some of the effects are great in here, including the reverbs and delays and mod effects as well. As you can see, there's four blocks. You can turn them on and off really easily. You've also got a master EQ as well, which is really useful. So it makes the multi-poly really useful for things like sound design and sound effects as well. Here's another sound. And it's just really cool to see the sound develop and all the different modulations you've got set, for example. Also within the software, you've got this little dice at the top right, and you've got that on the unit itself here, the randomize button. So at any time, if you're stuck for inspiration, you can just press that, decide what you're randomizing, and the amount that you're randomizing as well, just hit randomize and you just keep trying until you come up with something that you think is usable. So that editor is available for PC and Mac um, and we've connected via USB, as you can see, to the multi-poly. Let's just look at the other connections on here. So we've got a headphone out, we've got stereo left and right on jacks, we've got a damper pedal, I've got one connected today so I can sustain notes. You've also got regular MIDI as well and of course your power connection as well. So there you go. That is the multi-poly. Go and check it out.